One of my favorite punch combinations, which you don't often see these days, particularly at heavyweight, is the one-two to the head, followed by the left hook to the body. Evander Holyfield in particular used to spam that combination, as did Tommy Hearns. With the southpaw, it's obviously the inverse of that. So right left to the head and a right hook to the body. And Moses Italma demonstrated that beautifully here in his third pro fight against tough journeyman Konstantin Dobvichenko. It's a combination that comes very naturally to him. The one-two to the head brings the opponent's guard up, exposing the body for the follow-up hook. Dobvichenko has fought loads of unbeaten heavyweights, but none of them were able to stop him. And you can now add Moses Italma to that list. Italma tried his best to blast him out early, but when that didn't work, he settled down to some long-range boxing. He was very loose and relaxed, showed good mobility, good upper body movement, good speed, and great punch variety. He threw literally every punch in the book. Really impressive combinations. He wound up injuring his right hand though, somewhere in the middle of the fight, and you could actually see him grimace several times after throwing it. He used it sparingly in the final two rounds of the fight because of that. Hopefully the damage ain't too bad and they can get him out again soon. I've already seen some people saying that if Atama wants to break Mike Tyson's record and become the youngest ever heavyweight champion, he needs to be stopping people like Dobvichenko, which is absolute nonsense. He didn't lose a single minute of a single round and was in complete control from start to finish. You don't need to knock everyone out in order to break that particular record. You don't need to be as destructive as Mike Tyson. In fact, you don't even need to be a puncher at all. The third youngest heavyweight champion of all time is Muhammad Ali, who was 22 years old when he beat Sonny Liston. Ali was not a puncher, and Liston was a massive puncher. The current unified heavyweight champion, Alexander Usyk, is not a puncher. When will people wrap their heads around the fact that you don't need to be a big puncher in order to reach the top at heavyweight? And I'm not saying Italma isn't a big puncher, by the way. I'm just demonstrating that fans often put way too much emphasis on scoring knockouts when it comes to heavyweight boxing. This was Italma's third pro fight against the guy who's fought loads of unbeaten prospects and never been stopped. Incidentally, Mike Tyson's third pro fight was a fourth round knockout of a journeyman called Don Halpin, who'd already been stopped 11 times previously. And I can tell you for certain that Dovichenko is a hell of a lot tougher than Don Halpin. A hell of a lot tougher. Just compare the records. Also, the first time Tyson was taking the distance in his 20th fight was by James Tillis, a guy who'd also been knocked out several times prior to facing Tyson. But he took Tyson the distance. In fact, Tyson received a lot of criticism at the time for going the distance in that fight. He went the distance in his next fight as well against Mitch Green, which led to people saying that Tyson's punching power was overrated. Yes, during Mike Tyson's early career, there were lots of people saying that his power was overrated, simply because a couple of journeymen took him the distance. But a few months later, when he challenged for the world title against Trevor Burbick, a man who was much better than the journeyman who'd taken him the distance, he knocked him out in two rounds. Styles make fights, people. Styles make fights. We need to get away from this overly simplistic way of thinking, whereby if you don't knock out every journeyman you fight, you can't be anything special. It's silly. Some journeymen are extremely tough, and they are experts in survival. Anyway, after the Dovichenko fight, Italma said he wants another step up, but his manager, Francis Warren, was saying they need to take their time with him. I hope Italma gets his way and Warren doesn't hold him back because once the heavyweight title belts get fractured, which is bound to happen inside the next 12 months, there's every chance Italma could be ready to fight for one of the belts by early 2025. It's just a matter of getting him enough fights in the meantime to move him up the rankings and get him the rounds. I think they absolutely should push on and try to break Mike Tyson's record. It's a risk, yes, of course it's a risk but it's also a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's a chance to put yourself in the history books. Nothing worth achieving comes without risk, folks. Success is never guaranteed, but the guaranteed way to fail is not to try. So I applaud Moses Italma for going for it, and I shake my head at the so-called boxing fans who don't want him to. A lot of them are hiding behind this fake concern, pretending to be worried about his well-being. He's been sparring world champions and elite heavyweights since he was 15 years old, bruv. He's obviously a prodigy. So I say, let's let him off the leash 
and see what he can do. Obviously, you need to step him up appropriately. I'm not saying throw him in at the deep end now, but I think you can move him quite fast. Go and have a look at Dovichenko's record and see the other guys who he took the distance. Just go and have a look. Several unbeaten heavyweights, a top Cuban, etc., were taking the distance by Dovichenko. Grown men, well into their 20s. Anyway, bit of trivia before I go. Itama revealed that he's actually a converted southpaw, meaning he's naturally right-handed. Now, normally, I don't like converted fighters, southpaw or orthodox, because the backhand tends to be quite weak. But that's not the case with Itama. He throws the southpaw backhand like a natural left-hander. Manny Pacquiao is another one. I was absolutely blown away when I discovered that he was naturally right-handed. It's mind-boggling. It will be like Deontay Wilder coming out as naturally left-handed. That's how insane it is. But yeah, as converted southpaws go, Itama is very convincing. Anyway, I look forward to seeing him out again.